Today we saw San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Debo Samuels go down with a very bad looking leg injury. This was one of those severe injuries that actually required him to be carted off of the field. Now currently some sources are saying that Samuel is dealing with a knee injury, others are saying that it could be an ankle injury, and based on the video, to be honest, it could be either one. Now, since some people may not be too familiar as to why it could be an ankle or a knee or both at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on that with this video. Welcome back, everybody. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Allo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with my channel, I take a look at sports injuries and I try to explain them so that they are a little bit easier to understand. I also go over what that person should expect when they go to physical therapy. If you like this content and you wanna support the channel, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. All right, so we can see right here that as Samuel is running with the ball, he's going to get tackled. And right here, we see that left foot sort of get twisted awkwardly under the defender, and he's actually going to bend backwards. Now let's go ahead and start with the ankle. So here I have a model of the foot and ankle, and you have these two long bones. The first bone being the tibia, which is the bone we often refer to as being the shin bone. That's going to come down and form the medial or inside portion of the ankle. This is also called the medial malleolus. Then as we go towards the lateral or outside portion here, we have another long bone known as the fibula. That's going to come down and make the lateral or outside portion of the ankle known as the lateral malleolus. And then as we look further into this model here, there is a bone that sits right under those bones and that is known as the talus bone. And all these bones together make up what we know as the ankle joint. And there are four major movements at the foot and ankle. The first one is known as dorsiflexion. And that's when that foot is going to bend up just like this. Plantar flexion is going to be the opposite of that where the foot is going to be pointed down this way. As we flip the model this direction, another motion at the ankle is known as inversion where that foot is going to bend inwards like this, sort of in that classic ankle sprain position. And finally, this motion here is known as eversion where that foot is just going to go the opposite of inversion. Now, as we take a look at the video here, we see that as that left foot gets planted, his foot is actually going to be rotated more outside, and that's going to place a lot of torsion and a lot of twisting at that ankle joint. Now, when a person is going beyond their normal range of eversion, which is what we see in the video here with that foot being twisted out, that's going to stress the ligament that's located medially or on the inside portion of the ankle, and that's known as the deltoid ligament. So anytime a person is going to go beyond their norm value there, that's going to stress that structure on the inside. Anytime we get any sort of rotational component going through the ankle, especially with the foot being planted, we have to think about something also known as a high ankle sprain. And this is because it's going to affect the ligaments that actually are higher up than the actual ankle joint itself. The first ligament that's located on the front portion here, that's known as the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, and that's going to be located right here. Then as we go towards the back of the model here, we have the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. And these ligaments, essentially what their major job to do is to prevent separation of the tibia and the fibula like this. And so anytime somebody is going to rotate, you can see here that those two bones are going to try and separate. And one thing to, that's also important to remember as well is that we have an interosseous membrane that actually goes up throughout the entire diagram. So if somebody is getting any sort of a rotational component, those two ligaments are also implicated as well as the rest of that interosseous membrane. So, so far looking at this video, it looks like that potentially the deltoid ligament as well as the high ankle ligaments could be implicated. One other thing of course is the risk for fracture in this position. Anytime you go into those extreme values, you can put strain on either the lateral or the medial malleolus. You could also put strain on that talus as well, where it could lead to something known as an ankle dislocation where that talus will pop out of the joint like that. So basically we need to see if any of those have been ruled out, but as of right now, it's looking like at least that deltoid ligament as well as that high ankle sprain are implicated. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how the knee could be implicated here. So I have a model of the knee joint. 
The knee is formed by our femur bone, which is the bone located here in our thigh. That's going to come down and make up the top portion of the knee. And then in the bottom here, we have that same tibia bone, which is the shin bone. That's going to come up and form right here. And then we also have the fibula, which is located to the side. There are four main ligaments at the knee that contribute to overall knee stability. That first one, of course, is that ACL or that anterior cruciate ligament. And that's located right in through here. As we go towards the medial or the inside portion of the knee, this is that MCL or that medial collateral ligament. As we flip towards the outside here, this is the LCL or the lateral collateral ligament. And finally, as we go towards the back, this is that PCL or that posterior cruciate ligament. Two other important structures that are located in the knee, of course, are the medial and lateral meniscus. You can think of these as two pieces of fiber cartilage that essentially are shock absorbers between the femur and tibia bones. Now we can see here that yes, as that foot gets hung up under the defender, he's going to bend backwards and there's going to be a force on that knee requiring it to bend. Now in this position, it looks like he's getting a force from the defender going from the back towards the front portion of the knee. So it's creating a force like this on the tibia. Anytime you're getting a posterior to anterior or a back to front force like that, that is putting a lot of strain on the ACL because the ACL's main function is to check anterior translation of the tibia. So anytime a person is going to get enough force there, there is risk of that ligament being damaged. Another thing too is if it's not a perfect force coming from the back, sometimes it'll be coming at an angle where maybe they'll go anterior medial or anterior lateral. So anytime this happens, then we run the risk of the MCL or the LCL being involved as well as one or both meniscus in the knee. So based on the video and the biomechanics of the leg, it looks like either the ankle or the knee could be implicated. Sources, once again, are saying it could be either one, but as of right now, it looks like there's some word going around Twitter that he has avoided a major injury and it looks like it's just to be the ankle. So we're gonna need to wait and see if there's any more information regarding that. If he has avoided the major injury, then it's most likely a sprain. And hopefully it is one of those sprains in the ankle, whether it be the deltoid ligament, which would be the best case scenario, or if it's a sprain of the high ankle ligaments, that's gonna take a little bit longer, but we're just gonna wait and need to see what exactly is going on and the degree of that injury. Anytime we talk about sprains or ligament injuries, there's a grading system. So you have grades one, two, and three. In a grade one ligament injury, this is when you're going to get some stretching of the affected ligament, but you're not going to get any tearing. In a grade two, you get stretching and partial tearing. And finally, in a grade three, you get the major rupture. So if he has avoided a major injury, it sounds like then that's not going to be the grade three because that most likely will require surgery in a lot of cases. And it looks like it may be more along the lines of a grade one or two. If I happen to hear any updates regarding Debo Samuel's condition, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section because I know this is a very high profile injury. And of course, if you happen to hear anything, feel free to update everybody as well. And that's it as of right now regarding Debo Samuel's bad looking leg injury. I really wish him the best. He's been having a great season and for the 49ers to be competitive, they're really gonna need him moving down the stretch. So I hope it is more along the lines of a minor injury. But once again, if you like today's content, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future and I will be providing you with an update. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.